I, I guess the, the feeling is that the collapse is sort of inevitable, but if the United States can continue to play its part, the part that it has been playing for however many decades or, or however long, that uh, they'll continue to keep on kicking the ball or kicking the can down the street, you know? Um, I, I don't think it's going to work that well because uh, part of it is economic dominance, and that's that's waning. The United States is a smaller and smaller share of the global economy. The way the way the size of the U.S. economy is calculated is basically taking all of the mutual back scratching that goes on within the United States, uh, all of the, the basically the service economy with the United within the United States is huge. Most of the products being sold are are imported and foreign made. Um, domestically, the United States produces lots of incredibly overpriced services, especially in medicine and education, legal services, all kinds of business consulting, uh, outrageously expensive banking with, with all kinds of fees. All of that's stuff, right? These are all services where Americans provide services to other Americans, and then they claim that they've made something of value. Uh, what is that? What difference does that make to the rest of the world? It's just this giant black hole where enough, nothing emerges from it. Nothing, something happens inside, but why, do, why should the rest of the world care? But in terms of actual productive activity that goes on in the United States, if you subtract all of this stupid internal overpriced service economy stuff, it's a, it's a rel relatively tiny economy, much smaller than China, probably smaller than Russia. So um, I, I think that eventually it's going. this is going to catch up with it because the only way it can perpetuate the scheme is by taking on debt faster and faster, not just more and more debt, but it's taking, taking on debt faster and faster. It's a runaway train to nowhere. Okay. Um, so at some point it's, it's just going to crack. That's going to be a big event. Right, yeah. And... And by comparison, what does Russia say? I, I know that I, I bring up Russia because you do write a great deal about Russia. And I think it's mm -hmm. actually quite, it's quite enlightening because, uh, again, being situated in the United States, so much of, of how Russia is discussed is through the framing of it being like this evil empire that's going to usurp um, America's hegemonic control over other nations and whatnot. Um, it, it's like this kind of looming specter that everyone's afraid is going to, you know, there's still this discussion about its supposed alleged influence in the 2016 election. Just today, uh, a redacted version of the Mueller report was just released. So we'll see what, what comes out of that. Um, but this sort of obsession in, in American media about Russia being this boogeyman, you know, um, mm -hmm. but, but you always provide a pretty lucid analysis of what's actually happening in Russia and how Russia actually approaches the United States and treats the United States on the international stage. So compared to where the United States is, how would you say, what is Russia? What is its development? How is it proceeding into the future? Well, so far this century, it's been an absolute stunner in terms of how well Russia has done and how well Russia continues to do. And uh, everything that the United States has done has been very helpful to Russia, um, extremely helpful. Uh, for instance, um, the, Russia has rearmed. Uh, the, the, the armed forces of, of the Russian Federation now are, um, you know, light years ahead of where, where they were at the turn of the century. Um, and the way it did that was by basically uh, pretending that uh, nothing's going on, that everything is corrupt, that, uh, uh, you know, resources are being squandered and stolen. Uh, they did, they, they, they tried very hard to, to paint that picture. So, uh, everybody in Washington just pretty much assumed that, uh, Russia was down for the count, that it wasn't going to be able to do anything militarily at all, that it's just not, no longer a threat and that it can be crushed at will. Um, and, and then they were just completely taken by surprise so that the situation now is that the United States can be crushed at will, not that, the, not, not that Russia is interested, but basically Russia can deter the United States from doing anything in the world. Um, 
The United States can't do the same for Russia. Um, and and so basically the you know the tables have turned um, in in other ways uh, that you know the United States has has helped Russia immeasurably is by imposing economic sanctions and the EU followed suit and that has led to a wave of import replacement which has been a fantastic a fantastic benefit to to Russian industry. Russia has uh, very low unemployment. Uh, lots of new jobs being created all the time, um, new plants and factories being opened. Um, it's building, instead of importing uh, cars, it, it is building uh, foreign brand cars. Mercedes, for instance, is being built in Russia now to supply the Russian market and also uh, to export. And that's been the trend. Um, just overall, the, the, the trend is unmistakable. Russia is doing better and better. You know, as one example, uh, one specific data point that's important is Russia has reserves now, uh, sovereign reserves to cover every single uh, ruble of debt, foreign debt that Russia has. So it's completely immune to any sort of uh, financial, external financial manipulation. And if you look at, you know, ruble to, to to dollar um, exchange rate, it just doesn't move at all. Uh, oil prices go up and down, but the exchange rate stays the same. So it's been decoupled. Um, another thing that's happened is that right now, if Russia stopped exporting hydrocarbons, uh, natural gas and, and, and crude oil, it would still generate a trade surplus. So it it is no longer really dependent on hydrocarbon exports in order to sustain itself, the structure in place is such that uh, the the tariffs on, on hydrocarbon exports go into the treasury and finance a lot of social spending. Um, but that's calculated on the basis of really low oil price. It's it's higher now than what's been budgeted for. So there's a gigantic windfall. So in terms of all of all of, all of that, Russia is doing really quite well. 